Hi, I'm Adam Pennell, Shropshire Lad. Summer's finally here, the sun is out. I'm here to show you my top 10 barbecue tips. Look at that, it's crazy juicy. Okay, number one is to have these essential barbecue tools. You need to make sure you've got yourselves a sharp knife. You're always gonna be cutting, trimming, needing to use a knife to make sure it's sharp. Cleaning your grill, the only thing you need is a wire brush. I spoke to the EHO about it when I set up my business. They say heat and a wire brush is all it needs, so if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Decent tongs and a flipper or spatula. Also, a rubber brush for applying any of your sort of sauces, rubs, glazes. Brush is essential. Rubs and sauces can be key in giving you the confidence to get a really quick, simple, delicious dish on the barbecue. Chimney starter. This bad boy will have your charcoal lit in five minutes flat, and I'll show you how a little bit later in the video. We always cook to temperature and not to time within barbecue, and so a good meat thermometer is exactly what you need to give you those perfect results every single time. I'm gonna be using the meter to show you how to cook a chicken later in the video. Finally, heat-proof gloves, essential piece of kit for making sure that you don't burn yourself when you get into a situation where you maybe need to move something or the grill's too hot or whatever. There's lots of times where you're gonna need heat-proof gloves. Also, latex gloves, really, really handy for just making sure you don't get loads of rub or sauce all over your hands when you're prepping your food. Fuel types, okay, so I pretty much exclusively use British lumpwood charcoal for all of my barbecuing. This is Caradoc charcoal, it's made from British hardwood. And most of the hardwood in our woodland here in the UK isn't anywhere near as hard as some of the wood that's used for some of the imported charcoal, which is usually, unfortunately, sourced from the rainforest. Now, we're talking about a carbon product here, okay? Two carbon products at the end, but they have massively different carbon footprints. This is made by mate, my mate Kev down the road here uh, in Shropshire, and it's using British wood, uh, which is replaced every single time it's cut down compared to the cheap stuff that you often get in the supermarkets or the garage, which is usually taken from the Amazon, unsustainably, not replanted, stuck on a diesel boat, moved halfway across the world to you to cook on. So, you know, if you want to be cooking on the rainforest, you can carry on using that. If you want to use my advice, get a decent Lovewood charcoal supplier from Britain, and you'll find that it lights super easy, and, you know, you'll just feel better about cooking over it. Wood chips tend to burn away really, really quickly, so they're okay if you want to inject a quick amount of smoke to say something like fish that maybe is only going to be on the grill for 10 minutes or so, but anything that's slightly longer than that, I always would suggest using lump wood. So we've got cherry here, which is really nice for sort of poultry, for white, white meat, pork, you know, anything like that. Or, and here I've got uh, an oak whiskey barrel, which I might use on sort of venison, beef, lamb, darker meats tend to like the harder woods from the woodland, whereas the fruit woods are for the lighter meat. In my opinion, it's up to you. Have a play around, see what you like, but those are the general directions that I would go with when I'm selecting the wood I'm gonna to use to smoke a certain type of meat. And of course, barbecuing takes a lot of time and effort in the garden, so make sure that you've got fuel for yourself. Okay, the easiest way I know to light your charcoal for a grill like this is to use a charcoal chimney starter. Really, really simple piece of kit. Drop it on the grill, fill it up with charcoal. This allows you to light a small amount of charcoal and put it exactly where you want it on top of some unlit charcoal and allow that to then light. Once you've got your starter filled, you just need to take one of your fire lighters, light it and drop the charcoal starter over the top. It's a really, really quick and easy way of lighting the charcoal and getting a small amount of it lit, which is what you want. You're never really in a situation where you want to light all of the charcoal at once. You want to make sure it lasts, you want to use it efficiently. And by lighting a little bit at a time, putting it in the right place, you can do that. So the firelight is burnt out at the bottom and the coals are lit two thirds of the way up here now. So I'm just going to remove the grill. Got some charcoal laid out here ready on the one side of the grill going to pour that out on top of the unlit charcoal on the one side of the grill which moves on to the next tip cooking with different heat zones now heat zones are so important on a charcoal grill how many times have you been to a barbecue 
and seen somebody fill the whole grill, cover it in sort of petrol or whatever it is they're using to light their, their, their grill. Uh, again, it's super, super hot, throwing on their Richmond sausages and then they've got an inferno that they can't deal with because the, as soon as the fat hits the grill, then it's got flare-ups and there's nowhere to move that food to. You've got no control whatsoever. So you end up with black sausage on the outside that aren't cooked in the middle and everyone's got food poisoning on a Monday. So we've got these sausages over the super hot coals now, sizzling away. The skin is almost it's bursting. It's, you, know, you don't really want that with the sausage. So we can move them over to the medium heat here, which is just on the edge of the coals. See, that one's almost burnt there. We're starting to get some flare-ups. We want to move those out of that heat zone, that hot heat zone, before it's too late. There's more than enough colour, I think you'll agree, on those, those uh, sausages. So my best advice now is to make good use of the lid, which is my next tip, how to use the lid effectively. So we're going to move these sausages over to the completely indirect side of the grill now. They're probably, if you were to eat those now, going to make you sick. To save them and cook them through, any more time over that hot charcoal is going to be too much. But what we can do now is make good use of the lid. By putting the lid down here is the heat, the heat from here is going to draw over the sausages and out of the vent here, right? So we've kind of created a wave of heat that's going to go over them. If it gets too hot in there still, you can use the vents here. We close down the vents which are underneath here and close down the top vent and that's going to make sure that the fire starts to die down because fire needs oxygen. If you give the fire more oxygen, it's hotter. If you reduce the amount of oxygen it has, it's going to drop down. And you can leave those sausages now on that side there until they're cooked through. Right, a step up from cooking burgers and sausages is to move towards cooking a whole chicken on the barbecue. So using exactly the same principle that I've just shown you with the two zone cooking on the grill there, I'm gonna show you how to spatchcock a chicken. And take the chicken's dignity away and get its arse up in the air and its legs spread. There's its tailbone and we're gonna take that out. Now the easiest way to do that is with a pair of scissors. You can literally just cut straight down the one side of the spine. If you've got good sharp scissors, they'll go straight for a chicken just like that, or if not, you can do it with a knife. Just work straight down the spine, all the way down. And what I like about spatchcocking chickens is you're always gonna end up with a few of these. If you do, I do a couple of times a week. Oh, just go through that last bit of bone. See the scissors is the easiest way. Turn it round so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you've got this, this spinal cord here, comes out. That is great for stock. So you can stick that in the freezer, roast it off, make some chicken stock with it for gravy or whatever at another time. Then we've got the, the spinal cord's been taken out. So you've just got this, this sort of breastbone here. So you're just gonna, with a knife, just give that a little hit. Like that. And then we can open the bird up. And we have a flat spatchcocked chicken. The next stage is to make sure that we cook this to temperature and not to time. With chicken, this is more important than any other type of meat, in my opinion, because the breast here really needs to not go much above 74 degrees before it starts to dry out. Whereas the legs here, the drummers and the thighs, they can take a whole load more of a hammering and the wings also, they can be taken into the 90s and still be juicy. This is the bit that you've got to try and nail. And the best way to do that is to monitor the temperature throughout the cook so that you can pull it off at the optimum time when it's ready. And the best way for me to do that is using the Meter Pro. So all we do with this, this is a digital thermometer, connects to my phone via Bluetooth. So we put the pen into, or the, the probe, sorry, into the thickest part of the breast there, like so. Okay, and then moves over to my phone. We're going to go into the app now, press set up the cook. We've got poultry today, cooking a chicken. We're cooking it whole. Meter recommends 74 degrees. Okay, we're going to go with that re recommendation. Press start the cook. We just have to turn on, turn up the sound so we hear the notifications. And that's it. 
Okay, rubs and saucers can be super handy and convenient to use. Just need to make sure you know what you're doing when you're using them. Both rubs and saucers, shop bought rubs and saucers, will probably contain quite a bit of sugar. Now, both of these contain sugar. Um, the dry rub has mostly sugar in it. It's the number one ingredient. This sauce is actually called Sugar Lips, so it gives you an idea. It's, but they're always quite sticky and sweet. Okay, sugar will burn under, under high heat, right? So you've got to be a little bit careful about when and where you use it. Now we're cooking indirect here uh, with a chicken. So what we're going to do is add just the dry rub. Now the dry rub, there's only a little bit of sugar in that in comparison to the stickiness that's in something like the sauce. And also by applying the dry rub, you're still going to allow the smoke to penetrate the skin. If you cover that chicken in a wet marinade or a sticky rub, it's, the smoke is going to struggle to get through the skin and into the meat. So we always, if we're going to smoke something, any kind of meat, we'll always just dry rub it first and then add the sauce at the end. But another reason to add the sauce at the end is that the, if it's just in the heat for a few minutes, then it's not going to burn in the same way. If you put a marinade onto a piece of chicken from the beginning that's really sugary, it's going to be black by the time it's cooked in the middle because the sugar is going to burn on the outside before you know, we get to the optimum temperature inside. Simple really, but good to know. Just like with the sausages, we've got two heat zones. Okay, we've got our hot right at the back. It's sort of medium here and there's nothing over this side, which is exactly where we're gonna place the chicken. Now you'll notice that I've put the legs and the, the drummers and the thighs closest to the heat source because as I said to you before, they can take more heat than the breast. The breast is at the furthest point away from the heat source as possible so that these get the longest cook, so we'll make sure that they are really crispy and bite through. The wings will be done anyway because they're small. And the breast, it takes the longest time to cook over here because we want to take that off as soon as the meter tells us that it's ready. All we need to do now is add some smoke. All we're going to do now is add a little bit of cherry wood to the charcoal here, okay? We'll put the grill down. We've got our chicken here waiting to sort of cook. What we're going to do is add the lid and just like with the sausages we're going to make sure that the this vent is over the chicken because what we're going to find is as soon as it's already in fact it's already started as soon as the lid's on you're going to start to see that smoke pouring out of the vent here and we know that because the 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 source of the smoke is at this side of the grill and the chickens here, we know that that smoke is being drawn right across the chicken, over the legs first, which can take more of a hammer in than the breast, over the breast and out here. And we get a beautifully smoky chicken. Uh, excuse me, Adam Padel, how long will this chicken take? If I had a quid for every time I've been asked that, I wouldn't be in it's slogging my guts out trying to make my money on YouTube. But the answer is, I don't really know, right? I'm running this pretty hot. It's pretty hot. I don't know exactly how hot it is. I've got a clue from the meter. It's saying at the moment though, the ambient temperature is only 110 degrees. It's not gonna be that, but it's still climbing up, okay? But if I put slightly more charcoal on today than I did last time, it's gonna be hotter. If the wind's blowing more, there's more oxygen going through the grill, through the, through the vents, that's gonna be hotter. So the point is, you can never predict a time. That's why it's so important that you always cook to temperature, which means we could be standing around here a while. So my next tip is to make sure you've got plenty of cold beers or beverages and snacks just to tide you over until it's done. Okay, so we've got just over 10 minutes to go until this chicken's ready. It's time to add this glaze. Oh, look at that. Smoke's working wonders. See the wings is blistering already. Can't wait to eat this. You can probably put two or three coats on. As it cooks and caramelizes, just add another. Just layering up the flavor now. We, with 10 minutes to go, I'm not worried that this is gonna burn, whereas it would have if we'd have put it on the start of the cook. Okay, let's have a look. Nita says she's ready. Look at that. That's really important, the, the resting part of the cook, right? You've got this put to this point, you've got this beautifully glazed barbecue smoky chicken. The last thing we want now is to lose all of the juices inside it. And basically what happens when you're cooking meat, you put in a muscle into the heat, the muscle contracts and gets real tight and then obviously get to the point where it's cooked. If you pull it away, the muscles are still really tight because the, the, the heat is still going up. So what the meter probe's doing right now 
is checking to see when that temperature starts to drop again. And as soon as the temperature starts to drop, that's the optimum time to slice it. So we're resting until we know that point has, has come. Um, you can't tell that by looking at a bird, but obviously the app knows exactly what's going on because it's tracking the temperature all the way. Here's a little tip for free as well. These fellas, Doritos, they double up as amazing firelighters. They're so full of crap and oil and I don't know what's in them, right? But they're flammable and they will light your charcoal, I promise you. So if you haven't got the fancy eco firelighters, you should use some of your snacks. Put them on the grill and light them as you would any other firelighter. Tells you a lot about how good they are for you and they will light your grill. So if you're ever short of firelighters, grab a bag of Doritos, trust me. Okay, I'm just going to give this a little slice up. So as I say, the legs can take a lot more of a hammering than the breast. Just look how much juice has come out of there. Straight through the middle. I'm going to cut across. You see there, crazy juicy. Cook through. That's just on the spinal cord where I've gone straight through the bone. You ever seen juicier chicken than that? I don't think you have. A little taste. Nice going straight through that skin too. Mmm. Literally caught just on the cusp. Chicken breast is so, so juicy. And the only way to do that is to be cooking to temperature, not to time. I used the meter today and got perfect results. I really hope you've enjoyed my top 10 tips for barbecuing. If you want more, make sure you like, subscribe, tell your mates and all that jazz, and we'll see you next time.